Hello dear students, welcome to 10th standard social science lesson number 3. In this lesson you have a topic by name, the constitutional development. Most of the students find the constitutional development provisions uh, as tough challenge to learn. I have tried my best to simplify the same. Dear students, you have nearly 10 acts listed in the lesson. And out of 10 acts, minimum 6 acts you must and should know. Which are those? How to memorize? How to learn them? Let's make an effort to know that. Welcome to History Lesson number 3. In this lesson, the constitutional development topic will be discussed today. First of all, I take up laws implemented during the rule of East India Company that is from 1773 to 1858. So the first act before you is Regulating Act 1773. In textbook the explanation and the points everything is given so it looks lengthy for the students. These are the provisions you can mark it in the textbook and learn. First of all, the governor of Bengal became the governor general of all the three presidencies. The governor general was authorized to direct, exercise, control and to supervise over the other two presidencies that is Madras and Bombay. The Bombay and Madras presidencies could not declare war on anyone or enter into peace agreements without the prior approval of the Governor General of Bengal. The last one, the Supreme Court was established in Calcutta. These four points are more than sufficient to score two out of two. Fitz India Act 1784 so there are four provisions here. They are shortened one. Chikkadagi, Saralavagi, Chokkavagi, Kodalagi. The government of England restricted the powers of the East India Company. The Board of Controllers replaced the Board of Directors. Ihindeidanta Board of Directors na remove Madi or na Board of Controllers on the Karadru. And it consisted six commissioners. This board had powers to direct and control the issues related to land taxes, military and civil areas. Next, Charter Act 1813. Charter Act 1813 licensed the company to stay for another 20 years. A new era of license and permit was started. The Board of Controllers was vested with the powers to appoint the governor general the churches were allowed to enter india officially next charter act 1833 the governor general of bengal was named as the governor general of india <clears throat> The Governor General was vested with powers to direct, control and supervising all trades in India. The central government of Bengal had to decide on war, peace and diplomatic relationship with the princely states of India. The act barred any discrimination based on religion, birth and skin color. The Governor General was mandated to appoint a law professional. T.B. Macaulay became the first law professional in William Bentick Executive Council. Now, let us go to British Government Acts that is from 1858 to 1947. Indian Government Act 1858 The license of East India Company was cancelled and India was brought under the direct administration of the Queen. The post of Governor General was changed into Viceroy. Lord Canning became the first Viceroy. 
a new post called Secretary of State for India was created. A Council of India was created in order to assist the Secretary in the administration. Next, Indian Councils Act of 1861. Indians were nominated to the Council of Viceroy as non-official members. Viceroy was authorized to proclaim ordinances in case of emergency. Next, Indian Councils Act of 1892. There are three provisions. The number of additional members in the regional and central legislative bodies was increased. The Legislative Council's authority was increased further by allowing discussion on budget related issues. Provision was made to question the government on public issues by serving six days notice in advance. Now, Indian Councils Act of 1909. The total number of central legislature members was increased to 60 from 16. The number of council members was also increased in the provinces. In order to provide a separate representation for Muslims, separate electorate college was created. The Government of India Act 1919. The Act 1919 formulated bicameral legislative body that is upper house and lower house. The diarchy was allowed at provincial governments. An high commissioner was appointed for India. The promised to improve local self government. Provincial budget was separated from central budget. Separate electoral college was extended for Muslims, Sikhs and Anglo-Indians. The last act of the topic, the Government of India Act of 1935. A federal system of Indian principalities, British governed regions was created. Reserve Bank of India was established. Diarchy was established at the center. Diarchy was abolished at the province and introduced at the center. The federal court was established. These are the important provisions of all these acts. Among them, 1773, 1784, 1858, 1909, 1919 and 1935. These six acts are very important as most of the times these acts and their provisions were asked. Dear students, I wish you all the best. Thank you.